we are going to create a form to let our users create new parties. For that, we are going to use Angular Reactive Forms. To get started, the first thing we need to do is go into the module where we are going to create our forms. In our case, it's the Create Party module and add Reactive Forms to the Imports Array. This is a crucial step because if you don't have Reactive Forms module in your Imports Array, then it's not going to recognize the form and you're going to get errors in your console. Next, we are going to go into the Create Party page and we are going to import the packages we need for our forms to work. Right now, we need Form Builder, Form Group, and the Validators. These are all packages from Angular Forms. Next, we are going to create our form. Our form is going to be called Create Party Form, and it's of type Form Group. Next, we are going to inject Form Builder into our constructor, and this is the tool that's going to allow us to create our form. To create our form, we are going to initialize it using Form Builder. Inside of the Form Builder, we are going to pass the fields our form is going to have. If you recall the previous lesson where we created the list of events, we added an interface called Party. It has the properties that our event has like image, title, description, and date. Since we are going to follow the same structure, this would be a good moment to go ahead and move our party interface to a more centralized location, where we can import it then in all of the files that need it. So we can remove it from here. We can open our file explorer, and we are going to create a new file called models slash party.ts. And in here, we're moving our interface and we're going to export it. Now on our homepage, as you can see, it now doesn't recognize party. So we can go ahead and import it from the models folder. And now we can import also our party interface in the create party page for when we need it. Now inside of our form builder, we can start creating our property. First, we're going to go with the song's title. The property name is title. We are initializing it in an empty string and we are telling our form that uh, this is going to use the required validator. So this is a required property. And we are going to do the same for image, description, and date. And we are also going to create a function called add party. Right now, the only thing it's going to do is log the results of our form. Then we are going to go to the create party.page.html file where we are going to create the shell of our form. It's a regular HTML form, but it has a form group property that's from reactive forms and a submit property. When this form is submitted, it's going to call the add party function. Now it's time to start adding our fields. The first field we're going to add is the title. As you can see, we are using an ion item and inside it has a label and an input. When we save, you can see that it reloads the page and the label we marked it as tag is here on top of the field. And then all of the field properties are there, like the field label, the form control name says which one of our fields this is. It's of type text and the placeholder just appears here so that we can start typing. We are also going to add a button to the form so that we can see our changes in real time. And the, to the ion content, we are going to pass an ionic utility class called ion padding. This way we can see it a little bit better on the screen. As you can see now, whatever we type in our event title, when we click save, then the add party function is logging the results to the console. We are also going to create an ion item for our description, but instead of a regular input, we are going to have a text area. And as you can see, the form control name always points to the property we are creating. When we save, you can see reload on the screen. So now we can have an event's name and we can have a description here to be whatever we want. When you click save, you're going to see both properties in the console. Next, with the image field, we're going to add an input so that the user can paste the URL of their image. When we save, you can see it reload on the screen. 
and it's here. And lastly, we are going to add a new field for our date. In this case, we are going to use one of Ionic components called Ion Datetime. And what it does, as you can see when we reload the screen, is that it gives us a native date picker. When you click on select date, it lets you pick the date like this. It might be a little confusing, so you can also change the display format here. For example, we are going to give it four Ys. This is to show the full year. When you reload and click select date, now you can see that it's showing you the full year. Also, since we don't want people confusing the day of the month and the month itself, what we're going to do is we are going to give it some structure to the month. And here, when we reload, you can see that it shows the month in writing. That way, there is no confusion and the user can know it's saying, OK, this is going to be July the 29th. As you can see, our form looks a little bit much together. So we are going to go into the SCSS file and we are going to add some margins to give it a little of breathing space. Then we can make sure that the functionality is working. This is going to be a birthday party. We say it's someone's birthday or something like that. Then we can paste the URL of our image and here we can select the date. Let's say it's next week on February the 3rd. And when you, when you click Save, you can see that we have all of those values here in the screen. As you can see, we are missing the date value. And why do you think that is? Like, if you look close, closer to the form, you can see that we didn't add the form controller name to that field. So let's go ahead and add form control name to date. Then we save and it reloads. And then we can test again. And when we pick a date and click save, it should give us everything correctly. 